Hey everybody, this is John Bruni and we have an incredible guest with us today. For decades, Kevin Kearns has been professionally involved in the fitness industry. He created the Burn with Kearns program, which delivers innovative fitness training methods, philosophies, all designed from years of educating UFC fighters, martial arts practitioners, you name it, he's done it. Kevin has also been involved in the education sector, where kids from all over the globe have experienced his Growing Up Strong program, which promotes healthy habits through exercise and food, supporting the happiness and welfare of young people. His writings have been featured all over, just to name a few, Boston Globe, Train Magazine, Maxim, Inside Kung Fu, Men's Fitness, and so much more. There's lots of other accolades that we could list today, but we're going to get right into it. Welcome to the show again, and I say again because it was so good the first time, we had to have another one with him. Welcome to the show again, Coach K. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. And just so everybody know. We have something, well, plenty of something new. So the running joke is between my kids for years is um, I was a big superhero fan, right? Uh, super, Remember Super Friends on Saturday morning, the whole bit? Wonder Twin Powers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, my favorite, but te- technically my favorite superhero has always been Batman because he doesn't have any superpowers. So I had to do it. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah. Can you see that? You see the tat? Now you can really see it. I have one power. I never give up. That's dope. I love that. I had to do it. That, and then I did this. That sumbak sumbom for relentless in Thai. Ooh, I love that. I love that. You got to be relentless. So, you know, it's it's been interesting because uh, last time we did this, you know, I was living, I don't know where I was living. Doesn't matter. Uh, I, I moved like <laughs> twice. Um, opened a studio in Rhode Island that uh, didn't work out with my, that partner. Oh, and I'm running low on battery, so I'm gonna have to take you guys with me. Um, but uh, that's not what I wanted to happen. But so that studio didn't work out. He ended up not being the person I thought he was. Blah blah blah. That shit happens, and you move on, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is this is this is the. Uh, there you go. This is where I live now. Wow. 17 foot ceilings built in 1856 uh, Ashton Mills. So um, anyway, opened the studio, went okay, found out certain things that I didn't like. So I said, okay, done. And uh, walked away. Um, no money out of pocket, so no money out of pocket. Um, and You can kind of get my idea behind my artwork, right? I love the artwork, and I love the uh, – okay, and now I got that. It's coming into full focus now. Um, the fuck says I can't do it. I love the uh, brick walls. I mean, that's yeah, just go. awesome. Everything is around there is built to inspire. I mean, how can you not get fired up in that? Of course, Rocky had to be up. I got that same poster right there. I got two of them. Plus, you know, given, given my tie box, oh, this is the best one, so – I saw this on the uh, on um, on uh, uh, Amazon. I had to get that. Make no mistake. This is from the Spartans. Make no mistake. I will defend the weak. I will defend freedom. I will sacrifice so that others may live free. I will defend my family to the death. I love peace, but I am a fierce enemy. I live by a special code. Code. I live with honor. I was born to be a warrior. Oh, mm, love that. That's How amazing, you, brother. I mean, I everything have, around there just inspires. I mean, look, you've got, I mean, can you show people? You got the Wing Chun, you got, yeah. oh, shit. you got all kinds of stuff up there. Yeah, well, I, I got the Wing Chun dummy. I love that. Because, well, it's funny because I've always been fascinated for, for years by using it and then, you know, couldn't really figure it out. And uh, I started training with Mark Delagrati again at Sit Yutong. Um, I went back, I've been gone for a while. And like literally, Mark Mark's the type of teacher. Like, he's a savant, right? Mm-hmm. He's like one of the be- he's the, one of the best striking coaches on the planet. He shows me fifteen minutes later, I got it. I'm like, I've been trying to figure this out for like eons. He goes, me too. He goes, you'll love this one too. You can't beat you know someone that never quits. Two eleven year old tie boxes, and then 
when you go out the door in the morning, besides, you know, Rocky. Right, you <laughs> I love it. Morning, love it, love it, love it. Fine. To perform repetitive tasks over and over again to attain a goal. I love it. Because I'm, I'm just that cuckoo. Hey, man, I love the, the Wing Chun. Let's talk about it for just a second. I mean, that has to be the most complicated thing I've ever seen. I've looked at that. Of, of all the martial arts, just that little, the hand, hand-to-hand in close quarters. Oh, yeah. How, how did you learn that in 15 minutes? I mean, I've, I've seen it. It just looks so complicated to me. But I guess once you really get it, it probably becomes second nature if you were to get into, a, you know, some kind of combat situation. Mark, Mark is such a savant, right? Mark Telegrai is a savant. So all you really get, this is popping up. I can't stand computers some days. Um, all you got to remember is it's real simple. Well, it, it's the same as one of the Wing Chun looks similar to Sea Lot, right? Mm-hmm. So if this is the first arm, all you have to do is lock, swipe, attack. That's it. So it's just lock, swipe, attack. Then, you can go low high. You know, and what's great about this is that Bruce had like an arm that would bend and everything. You know, high low, really, but you're getting out of the way. But conditioning wise, it would. There's nothing like it. Then you just play around with it. You know, once once he showed me this set, I kind of just ad libbed because you're here. Then you can go on arm break. You know. There's, there's so much, you know, uh, outside entry, inside entry, running this and that cheats out. I mean, there's so much stuff you can do with this. Once again, then you get the leg thing down here. Once you once you get this, it's all a piece of cake. All you got to remember is you block, redirect, right? Attack or attack. That's a, you can use it for MMA. Mm, I like that. You know? I like that. This, there's yeah. a ton of, like, you know, look, you've got, there's your, there's your block, right? There's your redirect off a jab, or what's called inside, right? An inside split. There's an outside split, taking the outside hand. You can do outside split with the front hand, too. It's whatever you want. You can do come in. I mean, there's tons of, really, you name it, as the pin falls out. Well, what I like about that, I've been watching guys do that for years, and it, you, you're breaking it down, making it so uncomplicated. Like when you watch guys practice, the speed and the flow is just so crazy. But I guess when you can break it down like that, and that's what that's what Mark Delgado is good at. Like there was a, I teach a guy who chases more seminar. Mark's different. Mark's a savant. Mark Mark Delgado is good at pulling stuff apart and going, okay. So when you look at I mean, I studied from Zipyatong, and you have Mui Barong, which is very hard style, very stiff, right? Mm-hmm. Tie fights. Then you have Mui Chalat, the intelligent fighter, more fluid. You'll see boxing. If you go to Thailand, you don't see a lot of jabs, unless you're at Zipyatong. Then you hit pop, you know, you'll see the jabs, because they're looking for the big power shots, you mm-hmm. know? Mark was good at combining everything he learned from Guy Chase, JKD, uh, C-Lot, um, Kali, like now, Mark's like my size, maybe a little bit bigger. Rich Franklin's a big fighter, right? Absolutely. One time, Rich came in to train with them. It was like the first time or first week. In two rounds, Mark threw him, dumped him 15 times. And guy, he's getting frustrated with the tie box. He's like, well, I don't get it. He goes, He's not doing tie, he's doing C lot. He's like mm. tripping them, bazettes, you know, inside trips. It makes, it makes you know? total sense. Makes total well, sense. It, it, it's it's the you know I've been watching a lot of new uh, some Bruce Lee stuff and it's you know I always joke around and I say because <laughs> Mark's you know Mark's uh, Mark Del Grady's Italian to go he's the Italian dragon ah uh, <laughs> I like it we always joke around go Del Grady karate <laughs> I like that I like that so it's you know it's it, you know ever since I went back everybody's like you know dude. You get a big change. I go, you know, I've been in martial arts for 43 years. Mm-hmm. You know, I just got my, I got promoted in December, Blue Mon Kong. Dude, so. you're constantly growing. That's one of the things I appreciate about you most is that you're always growing, always stretching yourself. And speaking of that, uh, any new things been going on in your life and business since we last talked that we can put into a nutshell? 
Joa. Uh, I, I finally, well, not finally, I released my second book, There's Light in the Tunnel, How to Survive and Thrive with Depression. As mm-hmm. you know, we discussed it. Uh, December 2000, uh, December 2019, December 22nd, I did that, I'm trying to end my life. Um, December 23rd, um, 2019, I tried to find a spot in the Tobin Bridge and, and, and Boston tried to jump off and a, a uh, state trooper saw me, talked to me and sent me to my therapist and I got committed. So um, I tried everything else that I went through. And, and you know, it, it's interesting. I, you know, I've been through a lot of hard shit and everybody goes through hard shit. You know, as you know, my first book, my father died when I was 12 from alcoholism. Great guy. That's his ring. I don't take it off. I always tell people, I'm going to hit you with this. The whole current clan is going to hit you in the fucking face. <laughs> um, yeah, my right side's brutal. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I understood depression back then a little bit more and then found martial arts and strength training. And then, you know, got married, college sweetheart and the whole nine yards and people grow apart and, you know, um, she st- she became an alcoholic for a while, and I had a six month old, six month old, and two and a half year old at home. I'm like, what do I do? And um, that went on for a while. And as you know, alcoholism is a family disease, and it affected our relationship so much that it, it just didn't work. And I, you know, I, I did it for as long as I could. And after 12 years of it, five years of drinking, 12 years of her, of her 11, 12 years of her being in recovery, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And then you know, divorce. As you know, being a minister, right? Minister or pastor? Pastor. Pastor. It's awful. Yeah. It's awful. It, I, it's funny. I've, I've been through a lot of divorces. Sorry about my email. I've been through a lot of divorces with clients, and I've seen what happens to them. And I never expected it. You know, I'm not going to believe me. Mine was not clean, and it wasn't me. I'm not thrown underneath the bus, but she didn't make it easy. Plus, at one point, something happened to the gas meter at my house. It's crazy stuff like that. Um, ended up uh, costing us over a hundred grand for a twenty thousand dollar divorce, and it broke me. And then you know you leave and you go, okay, you went from <laughs> I went from being married in a thirty three hundred square foot house to having my kids full time to fifty fifty, and to living in like a thousand square feet in a box that I had to pretty much do it over, and I was broke, and I had to restart my business. Not to mention. You're, you're what, 40, John? I'm going to be 50 here in a couple of, in a few weeks. Hey, so Double nickels, bro. Love Just laugh. Double nickel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's how you got to go. So um, my girlfriend says, she's like, I got to check your ID. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, there's no way. I'm like, so anyway, uh, you know, going through that whole thing, um, it, it was just, I knew when I pulled the trigger on it, it was going to be awful. You know, it's going to be awful. I didn't think it was going to be this bad, but it was, it was bad. And then trying to date again at 50, <laughs> it's a nightmare. You know, okay. Everybody's like, you know, you know me, I'm pretty blunt. So all the, some of my friends are like, Oh, you know, guys are like, you know, go after like 30 year olds. Well, I go, I go, what are you nuts? I'm like, I'm 50. What, what am I going to, what am I going to talk about? Well, the sex I go, you know what, bro. And you'll appreciate this. I go, that would be all fine and dandy for what? Three, four, five hours a week? But what about the rest of the time? It's like Woody Harrelson said in Friends with Benefits. It's not who you want to spend Friday night with. It's who you want to spend all day Saturday with. I add to that, it's who you want to spend all day Saturday with and cook breakfast for on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. Yeah. You know, It's the connection. And I've never been the guy to have notches in my bedpost. I, I mean, yeah, when I was 17, 18, I was dating seven, eight people at a time. And all, but it's crazy. You know, I've, I've always been kind of like a one, okay, let's date this one for a while, see where it goes and the whole bit. But I'll tell you, being out in the dating world, number one, let's face facts, and you know this, divorce is trauma, right? It's Absolutely. trauma. It's a death. You probably consulted a lot of your, a lot of your par- parishioners. Is that yep. right, well, you can call, yeah, whatever you want to call them. That's good. A lot of, whatever they you know, you probably cons- you know, consulted, talked to, or had meetings with, or, or whatever, with a lot of your, your parishioners, right? that have gone through it yep. and it, the worst of people comes out. It does. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a, and you know, this is the way my therapist explained it. It's a, it's a failure of a relationship. It's a complete failure, mm-hmm. you know, complete failure. And then you have all the other bullshit that goes with it. Right. Okay. Now you're selling your house. The, the money has to be divided. The kids have to be, the kids went from living in the same house to 50, 50. It's a fucking shit show. 
I had a good friend of mine. I can't, I won't say who it is, but you know, very, very successful guy. I told him, him when I went through, he's like, dude, I had an amicable divorce and I had to go to therapy. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, it just messes you up. It just, it really, and then I didn't realize how much that, and then like, you know, moving someplace else, trying to push my business forward, date, forget about fucking dating. You know, I'm lucky now, you know, I'm, it's taken me three and a half years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've dated, no lie, I must have went through, and I don't want to make that sound like I went through. I didn't have, you know, I didn't sleep with everybody. Um, no way. That's just not me. But I must have went through 50 women mm-hmm. in three years. And it's so hard because you've got two sides to this. One, you've invested all these things, your, your whole life into a past partner. Like you've invested, people don't realize that. And then a good relationship, you're so vested into it. I mean, you've given all you can do. And even the thought of starting over, oh. it's like, you know, people, I want people to imagine it's like, it'd be like losing a job and starting an entirely new career. You've been in the same job for 30 years. And all of a sudden somebody tells you your job's gone, all your income's gone. You're going to have to totally start over from scratch. And we're going to put you into a job that you've never done before. You know, that's, can you talk a little bit about that? What it's like just to start over and, and the trauma that, that entails that? It's it's awful. It's hard because, you know, um, I you know, thank God for the apps and everything, but still, you know, you you know, my girlfriend now was surprised. She's like, You've been ghosted? I'm like, Yeah, I've been ghosted, you know, where they or fake profiles or mm-hmm. you know, you go out with them. You know, I I, I must I gone through like fifty one and three offs. Go for the first day. Oh, that was kind of good. Then they're just gone. Mm-hmm. Three three days. I'm like, okay, now you get a sense gone. Yeah. I mean, I I've met maybe one or two that were like okay, but most of the ones that like I went with and then ended. I had one that I ended with over the summer. She tried to get. She literally was going to claim claim a false domestic on me. Imagine that. She had moved in for a short period of time because she was supposed to go to Italy, and then COVID hit, and then she stayed with me, and then we had a fall, and then it was all done. And she said, you know what? Any judge would say, I went, oh, fuck. Any judge would say that the fact that you cleaned out three drawers. She wasn't on my lease. She wasn't paying me anything. She was worth 600 grand. I'm struggling. And she's going to claim me on a false domestic. That's why when I, I, I mean, I do a lot with domestic violence, as you know. And I, and women I tell the story with get pissed because what does that do for the woman that is? Mm-hmm. You know, for the woman that is, yeah. you know. I mean, it took me, it took me five days to get around the house, out of my apartment, five days, Wow. you know? So the, 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 the starting over is just, you're both gun shy, right? You both have a fear of failure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you both don't want to get hurt again. You had, you know, whatever the situation was, you thought this person was the same person for 25 years and you find out they're not. And then when you go through the divorce, they flip the script and it's like all the evilness comes out. You go, what the... Yep. Remember, remember me, <laughs> remember what, you know, so starting over is, is, it's not easy. You literally, um, you literally at one point have to throw caution to the wind and go, fuck it, fuck it. You know, uh, Batgirl hears me. That's a big joke. She's Batgirl on Batman, but she hears me say that. Oh, fuck it. Fuck it. Just fuck. And you know, I, I've, I'm, uh, I've got six tattoos. You know, as you know, you know, I get that one. And then, you know, my saying, hold your vision, keep your passion, maintain, oh, yeah. maintain perseverance, and then determination, enthusiasm. And then I put this one on too. This is, um, you know, as you know, integrity and heroic courage from, from the virtues. And um, at one point, you, I might, this, I'm getting another one. I'm debating about what I'm going to put. And either my, I was going to put my three, my two Ds and three Cs, desire, discipline, dedication. Uh, and then commitment, consistency, or I was actually thinking about one of my favorite quotes. It's anonymous. Uh, when your heart speaks, shut up and listen. Mm, I you love know? that. And w- one of my favorite quotes that you probably remember from Rumi, after all this time, this gives me, look at this, it gives me goosebumps. You can't fake that. Oh. After all this time, the sun never, look at that. It, you can't fake that. Nope, you can't. <laughs> the sun doesn't say to the earth, you owe me. Think what can be, that gives me Kundalini. Think what can be done with a love like that. It lights up the sky. 
So, I mean, the, the hardest thing to go through again is to find that right person and unconditional love. And at first, unconditional love for yourself, because now you have all these questions, right? Well, how did I fuck up? My failure, blah, blah, blah. I failed. And you know what? This is a great quote from Wayne Dyer. It's kind of like what happened with me with my, um, you know, with my suicide attempts and my depression. For all I know, I had to go through it to get to where I am now. You know, so I can sit there and say, okay, I can sit there and say, well, I wasted 20 something years in a marriage. Well, maybe it's what I had to get through to get through to get to where I am now to meet the person I wanted to meet. So, you know, with my, with me, the way we talk, you know, in background, I set this up. I said, look, four things, real simple. Honest, tactful communication, sincere communication, honest appreciation, honest affection, loyalty. That's it. That's all I ask. And I go, the first one's the most important one. Okay, most important one. Honest, tactful, sincere communication. That's all I need. I said, I, and she goes, I go, I'm a guy and wants direction. You don't want salt in that? Okay. <laughs> I always joke around. From the bedroom to the boardroom, it's all the same, man. We're a guy. We want direction, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a mind reader. So, you know, and, and it's, you know, starting over anything is hard. But you even, you know, I take a page from, you know, uh, Les Brown. I love that. You know, you know, I'd rather aim for the stars and not hit them than not aim at all. I'd rather go after it and not get it than not get it at all. Yep. You know, you know the quote, you ever hear the quote from Babe Ruth? No. Go well, I'm sure I've heard it, but go ahead. Jump on it. Uh, how did you how did you get so many home runs, Mr. Ruth? Because I fucking swung. Yeah, kept swinging. Kept swinging. You know, my dad used to say it too. My dad used to say, I'd rather shoot for the moon and miss than aim for a skunk and hit it. You know, it, it's well, all about expectations and trying. And I really want to focus today on this um, because I think it's going to help a lot of people. I want to focus on mental health and why should getting people to understand the importance of mental health be a priority in the times that we live in right now? Can you share Excellent. with us that, why it should be, a, it should be such a priority. And I find that people are focused on all other kinds of stuff and they're not taking care of their own mental state. Well, I appreciate it, John. It's a great question. I'm doing another podcast next month, all on this. There's a couple of different things that I did. As you know, I started that Fit First Responder program, which is completely free. Mm -hmm. I go out to a three-hour workshop, fitness, nutrition, and even defensive tactics, completely free. And I get free use of my app because it's affecting them. It's yeah. affecting everybody. Imagine being a first responder. We don't know the implications of COVID, the lockdown. We don't know. My mother died of COVID December of last year. She was on North 4 in, in Tufts Medical. North 3 was on the first on the uh, floor down. Now, that was six months into COVID. The nurses told me, that was the pediatric floor, that three months into COVID and the lockdown, they were overrun with kids from 8 to 17 with depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation. That's just, come on. What the fuck? Um, in these times, we don't know the implication. We're social animals. We're social animals. That's why we're doing this. Why do people want to listen to podcasts? Why did I reverse engineer my book? Because people want to hear it. My new book, as you go through it, I, I filmed it on Zoom, put it on YouTube. It's going to be raw and real. I told friends of mine, I go, when you listen to this, you're going to go, what the fuck? You win. And you know me. I'll go deep. I'll yeah. rip the freaking Band-Aid off, open the sky. I don't give a shit. Like, like Goggins said, fuck it. I don't care. You want, you want to see my life? You want to judge me? Go ahead. Go ahead. Now this is so important because people are just so affected. When I did that talk before you on that radio program with that lady, you know, one of the things I missed, I said, she goes, what are the four things you're worried about with COVID? I said, depression, and anxiety going up, suicide going up, um, sobriety going down. And I said, um, suicide going up. I said, and obesity going up. I missed domestic violence, child abuse, and divorce. It's all up. Mm -hmm. It's all up. Um, I, I, there's such a, and I'm going to admit this because you know me, I'm, I'm fucking raw and real. I had the stigma of, the, of mental illness. I'm Coach Kearns. I can fucking handle it. It's in my head. No, I couldn't. One morning, and I, I talk about this in my book, one morning I went in the bathroom to shower at 4.30 to get ready for a client. I fell on the floor and had an uncontrollable anxiety attack from nowhere. 
and it throws off everything depression. Your, your digestion. Remember not friggin' taking a shit for four days. Forget about sexuality out the window. Mm-hmm. And you just want you just want something to take up your mind, take up your space. That's why, you know, my first therapist, she always used to say to me, going through the, you know, my ex's recovery, um, she always used to say there's light in the tunnel, not there's light at the end of the tunnel. And the reason I named the book that way from her is because it, when you're an ex- when you're when you're anxious and you're, I'm talking bad anxiety, when you're depressed, when you're having suicidal ideations, bad thoughts, you you can't think about the end of the tunnel. You want it to be over now. I always equate it to being in turbulence. When the pilot says, "We'll be through this in 15," no, I don't want to know 15 minutes. I don't want to die now. It's like blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, over now. Stop now. So when your when your head is like telling you shit, I mean. Exercise stopped working for me, which was always my go-to. Yoga was nothing worked, nothing, and you just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper, and it just you feel like there's no light. Mm-hmm. There's literally no light, so it's awful. And then you know nothing. A lot of my best friends stepped up. Uh, my one of my best friends, Craig Rose, drove me to ECT therapy, electroconvulsive therapy. It was the only thing that worked. I spent a week, the 2019. Um, holiday week, holiday week, Christmas. I spent. I woke up at McLean Hospital on a lockdown board. That's how I woke up, and I found out about ECT. And my dad must have said something to me because I don't know. I didn't know much about it. I went fuck it. Mm-hmm. And usually, twelve treatments, you start feeling better. Three, and I turned the corner. And then when I when I announced it on Facebook, because my business coach says, you know, I want you to get back out there, talk about something hard. I talked about this. I didn't talk about my suicide attempt. I talked about this. I got 2,000 views in one day on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I've got 5,000 people. Yep. people, people from high school. This year alone, and I'm knock on wood, and I'm proud of this, thank God, I've, I've helped l- at least 10 to 12 people from either committing suicide or whatever it is because people they know reach out to me. Somebody would say, can you talk to my son? Absolutely, give me, give me the phone. Can you talk? Give me the phone. And I tell everybody, I'm not a therapist. I just lived it. Yep. I know what it feels like. I know what it smells like. I know what it tastes like. I know how awful it is. Yep. And it sucks. And you will get through it. I think the biggest thing people need to remember is you matter. Mm-hmm. You're important and you have gifts. They just might be wrapped. Yep. Well, that's all great stuff because you know, here's the thing. The way I kind of look at it is this. I mean, I don't know if you've ever taken a trip and gone. Our family, one of the things we like to do is visit these caves. So we like to go to these massive caves and you'll get in the deepest part of the cave and they say, now we're going to show you what real total darkness is like. And, you know, they turn the lights out and they're like, you cannot see your hand like one inch away from your face. You can't see it. Of course, they turn on the lights and everybody's like waving and doing all this stuff. It's classic. But that's what depression's like. You cannot see anything. You cannot motivate yourself. This is what I try to tell people. Um, one of the things that I feel so bad for people that are struggling with depression is they don't realize that. Things that people could do normally easily are an absolute struggle. Just getting out of bed, all the effort just to get out of bed in the morning when you're going through depression, I mean, the the amount of effort that takes. And so I think people can't really appreciate that who haven't experienced it. But like you're saying, look at how many people could relate. All of a sudden, when you start sharing this, they say, wow, that's exactly what I'm going through. If, you know, there's hope for you, there's hope for me. And that's what this whole idea is today is there's hope. And so we're so looking forward to the hope because it's this whole idea. If you were able to overcome it, people are sitting at home saying, wow, if he did it and all the stuff that he went through, if he did it, there's hope for me. And can you kind of talk to people a little bit about the road to recovery? How did you overcome all this trauma? And let me ask you, uh, well, we'll get into a little deeper in a second because I want to talk about, two. what are some unhealthy ways people push the trauma down? So let's start with how were you able to overcome Well, take this? take the, the, the word hope. So I learned this because um, uh, somebody close to me went through an eating disorder and had to go to a clinic. And they had a great quote for hope. Hold on, pain ends. Mm. And this is one that I learned from another um, – not a pastor, but this is from Lee Jordan, one of my mentors and friends. Lee used to be 400 pounds, and now he's 200. He's a coach. And his, his describing of how he was obese and 
the whole nine yards and what he went through on ace uh ace sort uh ace fitness you'll you'll be in tears but he said to me we had this talk about a year ago he says kevin very he's very religious which is great um that you know that's not my gig and what i love about people like you and other people um that are in the that spiritual sector they won't force it when people start mm-hmm. forcing it i'm out yep just leave me alone um because i had enough cat catholicism to to last me a lifetime and i mean you know we weren't exposed to what protestant was i just found out what protestant meant I mean, you know okay so hold on pain ends right hold on pain ends so it, lee said to me he goes kevin i've realized that pain is temporary and pain is inevitable inevitable suffering is a choice so let's take ah, i cut myself fuck that hurts put a band-aid on now i can either bitch about it mm-hmm. or do i let it go yep. right it's a matter of letting it go and i think as les brown put it too he's like you know what we oh, matthew mcconaughey i love that 13 troops we spend so much time trying to fix the past mm-hmm. if you just run to what's in front of you you will escape what's behind you mm. right you can't fix the past. We, we, are, we, even Matthew McConaughey said, "I love that guy." He said, "He goes, we're so busy trying to fix that shit. We, it's, it's behind us. Look, you've done it. Own it. Move on, and then let it go." <clears throat> I think the hardest thing I know I have a hard time. I make a mistake, especially with somebody close to me. Man, I'll just beat myself up, even <laughs> beat myself up for days. You know how it is, especially being a father too. You even worse. But as as a as a you know, as a martial artist, there's just something in our brains that, you know, we just, you know, it just, you know, I, I dated somebody briefly uh, over a year ago that was insulted on Facebook. Didn't even go out with her yet, but I saw something. I ripped these guys apart. She's like, we haven't even gone out yet. Gone out yet. I, go, I don't care. I go, it's not right. I go, it's justice. I go, just because they're tech tough guys and keyboard warriors doesn't mean they can get away with that. Mm-hmm. You know, look at what's that movie, The Social Dilemma, where they have that little girl and she's 11. She takes all these Snapchat pictures. She gets all these positive comments. And then she gets a negative comment about her ears and she's depressed. Really? The way we grow up, if you couldn't say it on the playground, shut your mouth. Yep. It's a different time. You know, and, and you're hitting on so many things. And I want to talk about this because this comes from my spiritual background and it applies to exactly what you're talking about. I find this. Most people don't struggle with forgiveness. They struggle with forgiving themselves. So because a lot of times people will forgive. We know God forgives. Um, No matter what your spiritual background, that's just kind of a tenet of most people's faith. But what I find is the biggest thing people struggle with is not forgiveness for, you know, other people or receiving forgiveness. It's forgiving yourself. And I find that's why we're our own worst enemies is that we can't forgive ourselves. A- absolutely, because, you know, I'll talk to you about two concepts that I, I worked on. I've been working on this quote for almost three years now from Mark Twain. Forgiveness is the fragrance that is shed by the violet on the heel that has crushed it. Mm. Forgiveness is the fragrance that is shed by the violet on the heel that has crushed it. You just stepped on me and I got to forgive you. The first person you got to forgive is you, especially with suicidal ideations or suicidal attempts. You got to forgive yourself. You got it because I used to think it's the most selfish action. It is. And it's a cry for help. Yep. It's a cry for help. Right. It's a cry for help. It's all it is. You know, I'm so depressed. I feel worthless. Everybody, you know, I feel worthless. This is one of my chapters in, the, in my book. If you're starving, you'll eat garbage. Mm-hmm. So if your if your relationship's not going well, even though you're getting some attention, it's like being a two year old. There's no negative and positive. There's no bad or good behavior they don't know any better they just want attention same yeah. thing you know when you're starving for attention you're like okay that's why people stay in toxic relationships they don't know any better and then we won't even talk about people that are manipulated right we won't talk about women that go through you know uh uh bad and wife syndrome and there's bad and spouse syndrome working with the police do you know how many police officers do not come out with the fact that they're battered husbands and won't do anything I know, I know a guy for a fact down, I think it was Texas, big jacked up guy, the whole nine yards, his wife treated him like shit. She, you name it, she did it to him. He locked him, big guy, he locked himself in the bathroom, called the cops. Another town said, you better come get her. She has a knife. I'm not going to hit her. 
Because when you're built like us, can't, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I you know, absolutely. unless a woman, I'll just like, you know, I'll be like, hey, man, you know, just try to push it off. They have a blade. Okay, then we got to talk. You know, or a gun, then we're going to talk. But other than that, I'm like, no way, man. I just, I've heard, working with domestic violence, I've heard more stories. And it's just, it, it just kills me because I got two daughters. I just, I, I just, and, and I look at men that do that, that do that to their wives or their significant others. I'm like, you're a fucking coward. Because anybody like you and I would take them to a fucking park at midnight and rub their face on asphalt because they deserve it. Now, bad choices. I think this is one thing I found as you get in the dating world, everybody compensates. Everybody's been through trauma. Okay. What I found people usually turn to alcohol or some substance, right? Sugar, right? People, people say, oh, marijuana is a gateway drug. Um, there's, ne- there's never been a, a, a marijuana DUI, no deaths. So that's when they legalize it. I'm all for it because we're wasting money. Why not tax it? You know, and it works for depression better than almost many things. Um, but people, what do they, they compensate, right? Alcohol, food, work, right? Um, sex. Sex is one of the worst addictions. Right. It's completely self-centered. You know, if you're going out cheating and doing your thing, you're you're being self-centered. Um, there's so many even over exercising, mm-hmm. you know, over, you know, oh, I'm, I work out seven hours. I'm like, what? You work out four hours a day. What are you nuts? You're 50 years old, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, but look how good I look. I'm like, yeah, you're paper thin. Something's wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've seen it so many times. Oh, I run. I'm like, you're running, but you're killing yourself, you know? Oh, so the, I, I think you have to get to a point especially after going through depression, anxiety, even suicidal ideations, you're absolutely good. You got to be able to sit there and go, I forgive myself. And I love what Matthew McConaughey would say. Knowing who you are is hard. Knowing who you're not is a lot easier. Ooh, I'm not, that's good. I'm not, I'm not disloyal. I'm not, I don't, I don't lack integrity. I don't lack character. Mm-hmm. You know? No, I don't. I got in an argument one time with my client. He's going through his own rough time, but, we were talking about equipment, blah, blah, blah. He's known me six, seven years. And he ripped me a new asshole. He said, I'm not buying equipment from friends of y'all. Blah, blah, blah. I go, what did you say to me? What did you say to me, PL? No, 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 no. When I recommend something, you know my rules. First rule of my business, I don't know everything. Second rule, I'm not going claim to claim to know everything. Third rule, third rule, you're not going you're not gonna to do an exercise program. I haven't done it myself. Fourth rule, I don't advocate any product at all, no matter what they want to pay me, unless I personally believe in it. I looked at them and go, we've known each other seven years. You do not question my integrity or my character because I'll fall on my sword first. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it costs me. You're not going to question that. He was like, sorry. <laughs> you know, bad place, but you've got to draw the line. And I agree with you. Forgiveness is the... This is the thing I've come to with forgiveness. You can forgive... You don't have to forget, mm. you know, I had, I had a close friend say to me a year ago, the woman I was dating back then said that I was the most, you'll love this. I was the most self-centered person she'd ever met when I'm just, in, when I'm recovering from depression, I'm like, and you know, you, you hit pause, you go, you know, am I ran up by two of my best friends are going to get on the phone. I ran up by another friend and he looked at me and he said to me, the yeah, mosquito, he said to me, yeah, know me 30 something years. Yeah, we're the most self centered person I've ever met in my life. I tapped the brakes and went, then I remembered where it came from. And we won't get into that. I'm like, yeah, why don't you go? You know what? There's a, there's a saying. Um, everybody's, I don't care how pretty the house is, everybody's got skeletons in the closet. You can have the Dick and Jane all you want, but you got skeletons, man. You know, people like, oh, well, the, you know, J Lo and this one, Alan, they're worth so much money. You think they're always happy? Look at Britney Spears, what she's going through. Yeah. And I think you're hitting on something that's really important is that forgiveness, if you want to be mentally, spiritually, emotionally healthy, forgiveness must be freely given, but trust is earned. So that's why I find so many people don't understand the difference between forgiveness and trust. You know, if somebody stabs me in the back, I need to, for my own, it sets me free. I need to forgive but I don't trust that person until they earn it again. I'm not going to be saying, hey, you know, here you go. Here's the keys. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. And I think that's why the message gets so messed up is because people think, well, if I forgive people, I got to be walked on. That's not what it's about. It's saying, I forgive you. I'm not going to trust you until you earn that. But I freely forgive you because I got to set 
myself free. I'm not going to carry you around on my back and my grudge against you the rest of my life. I can't live that way. No, so you, you just you did not interrupt. You just created a boundary. Yep. You crossed the line. So I equate relationship business. I appreciate what you said. Intimate, you know, intimate relationships. Real simple. I call it Lago Long Range Medio Corto. Medium. Okay, you start outside my circle, long range. Then I let you in a little deeper. When you get to Corto, you're going to be pretty close to me. Mm. When you fuck up, I keep pushing you out of the circle. I forgive you, but you're out of the circle to the point where then you get pushed past Lago. Then if it's business, I go, how can I use this person? Mm. Then there's no personal relationship at all. I've ripped up checks in front of clients and handed them back to them when they cross the line. I'm like, nope. When they, whenever they, anybody's ever pulled, they're like, you know, well, you know, in other words, like I need them more than they need me because it's money. I go, really? No, fuck you. I'll walk away. I'm like, I don't, nobody holds me. I, you know, if you read my first book, the whole pink pant thing, pink pants, when I had the pink pants on and they, I got thrown in that puddle over and over again. After that, that happened to me at 10 when I got thrown in that puddle in front of my house because I had those velour pink pants on by my, by my quote unquote neighborhood friends and it went on for 30 minutes. I can still taste the leaves, everything in my face. I said to myself, after that, I said, that's never going to happen to me again. Never. So nobody's going to do this to me. You try to put a knee on my neck, I'll bite your leg. You know, so I think you can definitely forgive. Trust is earned. My other favorite one is this. You know, God, there's so many favorite ones. I, I think forgiving yourself is definitely key. The other thing, this is from my good friend, Jackie Bonwell who's a yoga mentor, people always call it hindsight, hindsight. Hindsight is bullshit. She walked in the room seven years ago and she said, she's like talking to Mother Teresa. She's, you know, in her 40s. I had an epiphany. 50 people in class, nobody said a word. Instead of calling it hindsight, it should be called kindsight because how do you know until you went through it? That's interesting. Right? That's, I'm, say, I'm taking this in right now. I'm, I'm, I'm letting that kind of... Uh marinate in my brain a little bit that is really interesting way to look at it well how about this how many times have we said could have should have would have throw it out it's judgment mm -hmm. could have should would have the other thing i i it drives people nuts is one thing i learned from my old therapist was but john i like you but what did that just say mm. it subliminally, cancels out everything else cancels out all i just good. negated it yep right john i like you but blah 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 if i like you and, if i say i like you and has a different spin yeah. So, but subliminally negates it. So people don't know English language. Just like when I hear clients go, well, I should have, could have, would I go throw that shit out. It's all judgment. Mm. It's all judgment. I should have done this, could have done this. Okay, you're here now. Now what? Now what? That's now what? Stuff. That's good stuff. Right? Now, now what? Okay, I, I couldn't get up this morning. Well, let's try for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I should have worked out in the morning. Did you work out at night? Yes. So why are you going to keep beating yourself up? that's wasted energy and everything's energy. So why are we wasting our time? Absolutely. And I get it. I do it too, but who cares? Well, let me ask you this. So if somebody right now is listening and they are on the verge, you know, you're talking about light at the end of the tunnel and they're like, I, I need some, somehow I need this intervention. I, I want to do something right now. What's one or two things? Because I, again, I think so many times when people need help, we give them like, here's a list of what you can do. What's one or two things they could do right now that would help them get, you know, start that road to recovery? I mean, whether it's checking themselves in somewhere. I mean, what's one or two things that immediately could make a difference for them? Get professional help ASAP. You know, I don't care if you go to, and don't take this the wrong way. I don't care if it's a priest, a pa I don't care who it is. Mm -hmm. Somebody that you can trust, lay your heart on the table and go, look, man, I'm fucked up. Mm -hmm. I'm a mess. What do I do? I've had more people. I had a guy say to me, this is a great quote too. When I thought I could handle, you know, what was going on in me. He said, Kevin, if you have a kidney problem, go to a kidney doctor. If you have a lung problem, go to a lung doctor. How did you think you were going to fix the most complicated organ in your body? Right. And the problem is because of the stigma, people think if I, if I said I had cancer, people would be bringing food to my door, mental illness. Oh, hey, ooh, they automatically think you're psycho. Right. So, and I think everybody's had a form of PTSD some point in their life. Everybody. Mm -hmm. They may not be military, may not be police, but they've had it. Yep. I had it. My I saw my father in a coffin, open casket when I was 12 for a week. 
That doesn't screw you up? Yeah, it does. I saw my cousin uh, who was 18 at 15 where they filled in the hole where he took a bullet to the brain. That doesn't mess you up? Yeah, it does. So check yourself in. Absolutely. Check yourself in. You can do other things like the carnivore diet does a lot of good for people that go through depression. Um, I also think, I know you, you, you've, you've experimented, you do a lot with the light box. Look into everything. And, you know, I remember somebody saying to me when I got ECT, somebody, I won't say who it was, but they were a medical professional. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. Because fucking Hollywood, what do they do? One flew over the cuckoo's nest. ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, has been out since 1938. That's a long time. That's almost 100 years. They perfected it. It's got a 90% recovery rate, 90% for bipolar um, and, and pr- depression and anxiety. It worked for me. This person, just because they had, they had a lab coat, you shouldn't have done that. Why? Just because, because Hollywood demonized it? Yeah, maybe they did it before without anesthesia, but they do now. It's a whole process. And I didn't realize what a stigma was about that until I met with the people at McLean. And it's the same ECT group. And they told me, and I went, I had an epiphany. Two months before I stopped, I went, I had the stigma. That was my problem. That's the other thing. Give yourself a break. I'm hurt. I need help. Go get the help. Second thing, you know what? Hit, tap the brakes. Just tap the brakes. There's a great book out there, and it's in, it's in my chap, one of my chapters in my new book. There's light in the tunnel. I'm not okay. You're not okay. And it's okay. Who is, there is no normal. What is normal? Yep. Right? My younger daughter's alt. I didn't even know what alt was. It's like punk when we grew up. And you know what? I used to love those punk people. I didn't like the music, but I love fucking, you know, Mohawk, <laughs> Eric, they oh, just, yeah. you know what's great about it? They just didn't give a shit. They didn't care. No, it's like, it's like the skateboarders. They don't, or the BM, BMX guys, they don't care. They just don't, oh, oh, oh Larry, right? Uh, the, the great surfer. He don't care. Oh, Monster Wave, fuck it. Yep. It's like Gargan said, right? If, if the bigger you come, as you know, you know, you've been through it, the more haters you're going to get. If you can walk on water, they're going to say, because you can't swim. Yep. Everybody, everybody, nobody gets what, you know, what this means to be relentless. You know what it's like. How did you do all those feats? Yep. You right? never quit. You never quit. Just don't quit. So I think professional help. Look at your diet. Stop the alcohol. Cut that out. Done. Get over it. Look in the, I'm all for it. THC and CBD. Stuff works. Mm-hmm. And it's got, there's so many benefits to it. It's ridiculous. You, you know, look into uh, meditation. You know, anything like that. You know, spend more time in nature. I mean, you see where I live now. Such a difference. Blackstone, Blackstone River. I walk that river every day. Mm-hmm. Because you can, you know, the other thing to know too is this is one of my favorite quotes, one of my quotes too. Or maybe it's not. Progress, not perfection. Mm. We're all in progress, man. Always a white belt. Hashtag always a white belt. Always in progress. You know what? Yeah. If you look at, if you, if you take the Tao of the Ching, right? If you're in the valley, you should be celebrating because the hell's coming and you got to move forward. Mm. And if you're at the top of the valley, top of the valley, you can't celebrate because the, because the valley's coming. And that's just life. Life, and this isn't easy when you're depressed. I always tell people my famous quote is, life is the ocean. Sometimes it's nice and smooth. Sometimes you're bailing out your fucking boat because you're going to drown. And then five seconds later, it's fine. Yeah. You know, it's fine. And you know what's interesting? I do want to just touch on one thing. You talk about the stigma with different treatments. It's interesting that athletes have no stigma when they want to use uh, transcranial electrical stimulation for sports performance. But when we talk about mental, I used to have even, I had the neuro, the halo neuro for a while. Um, it was a pain to get it to work half the time, but there was never a stigma about shocking your brain for, you know, for sports performance. So why is that? Do you see what I'm saying? Anytime we seem to attach mental health to something, it all of a sudden we stigmatize it. We say, well, it's okay to do this for, you know, athletic performance, or it's okay to do it for this. But once we start talking mental health things, people just want to stigmatize. And we have got to put an end to that, people. We have got to do oh, that. You know, my good, I appreciate that. My good friend, uh, Detective Mark Massey, who's, who, who's been a Hoboken police officer for 23 years, was on loan to the DEA for 12 years, knocking in doors. He was the second guy in. Not the guy with the battery ram, the second guy in. Okay? <laughs> He's great. Mark's 240, uh, 5'10", tried out for the Giants, almost made it as a defensive end. And he could manhandle 300 pounders. 
He said, Kevin, you know what? When you really look at law enforcement, and I'm not just trying to talk about the blue, but when you really look at law enforcement, we would never, we would never train to deal with mental illness. And he was great. Even he even said he goes, even with people that are schizophrenic or multiple, you know, multiple voices, they they do they train a lot in this. They say the guy's like buck naked, sweaty, got a knife, and he's hearing all this. You don't know what's going on in his head. Mm -hmm. So we all don't know what's going on in people's heads. You know, it's like it's like Goggins said. He goes, you know what? People that say, you know, just but people, the ultimate puppet masters, you know, you know, what, why are you so jacked up? Why are you so crazy? Cause I want to be, you know, I want, look, that's why I've always loved Richard Branson. That most of the English, when he first came out, most of the Brits hated him because he's so flamboyant. He's so American, you know, that's what I like. He didn't care. You know, you get, there's a great quote from all my black friends and you know what? I'm not trying to get racist. Look, they're black. Okay. I'm like, they're black. Who cares? Um, because they say, I'm not from Africa, I'm from Malden. There you go. Dance like nobody's watching. Right? Who cares? Love it. Dance like nobody's watching. Right? Doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I, I love uh, Richard Collison's book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. Right? I love both those quotes. Those are both great, great, great quotes. And you know what? At the end of the day, like I, I remember being in at, at the Idea World Show 2011, right? I had been doing seminars and certifications all over the world with fit for martial arts. Now I was pushing into fitness. I'm in, and they filmed this. And they're filming it, turning it into a product, the whole nine years. So I'm taking a shot trying to bring this into corporate. This is this is 11 years, 10 years ago. 200 people sold out. There's 10,000 trainers that came to the conference. And I had to do PowerPoint. You know how I feel about PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And I turn around now. I've been doing this for three or four years of martial arts. So I know my lingo, my jokes. I'm cracking jokes. I'm getting crickets, crickets, and I'm like, now what the fuck? And it was like Bugs Bunny. Now what, rabbit? And then something in my head said, fuck it. I'm like, they came here for me. I'm putting on a show. Within five minutes, I had meat out of my hand. Even the film guys. I'm not trying to be egotistical. Even the film guys were like, dude, that was like the the best ever. I go. So you know, when you look at people with with mental illness, you know what? This is the the key term. Is not the first. It's the second. It's an illness. If we could sit there and say alcoholism, addiction is an illness, why can't we say the same thing? Why can't why can't that be perceived? Right? Why can't that? Why can't? I mean, I feel bad for all the I mean, I'm big on veterans. I mean, can you imagine I've got a good friend of mine that was a lurker, seven tours in Afghanistan, Somalia, and he almost lost his arm. Three purple hearts. I right? My, my big thing too is when people not, don't take this the wrong way, but my other big thing that I, I'll take a page from Catholicism, this is from my, my deacon Dave, right? He'll go through the Ten Commandments. If you ever committed murder, oh, no, no, no. Really? Have you ever killed somebody's spirit? Mm, that's great. That's, that's the great. difference. Oh, that's okay, right? That's okay to make fun of them. That's okay to do this. That's okay because they're different because they, they, they looked at, but you can kill their spirit. That's fine. Killing somebody's spirit is a hell of a lot worse than killing them, I think. That's a great point. That's a great point. Right? Just like people would say, like, well, why? Why? This was a great quote. I think it was from Wayne Dial. Why can they press my buttons? Because they install them. Mm. You know, you look at the virus of the mind, right? A meme, just a virus put in your head. You look at people like the bad women syndrome, or whatever, bad husband syndrome, right? Oh, you know, you're worthless, you're this, you're that, and all that passive aggressiveness. People don't understand how bad passive aggressiveness is. You, yeah, you look good in that, right? How does that make you feel, right? People say that, you know, uh, actions speak louder than words. I go, they do. And words cut. Words are important. Why do you say you're sorry? Why do you say I love you? Why do I? Why do you say you miss them? Right? Why? Because it matters. Everything right matters, and it's energy. It's all energy, man. You know, like everybody sees my tattoos. I go, they. I go, you want to put art on? I'm all cool with that, right? That's your representation. Me, I do it to them. I see that every day. You know. Oh, it's got to get you jacked up. It's got to get you fired up every time you look at it. Anything. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I do. It wax me out. Yeah. Well, I, I want to say this as we get ready to, to close our time. We've, we're so glad that you've spent this time with us. And hopefully nice we'll do up. another one, brother. But um, let, I want to say this before we get ready to close. And I'm going to turn it over to Coach K. Everybody, this is like you need to get this downloaded into who you are. I don't care who you are, you have experienced some kind of trauma in your life. And it may not be on the same level as somebody going out, you know, to Afghanistan or Iraq, but trauma is trauma to you. So no matter what the level is, the brain doesn't differentiate 
somebody else's trauma and your trauma. So everybody has trauma. You need to understand that and take what you've heard today, put it into practice, go out, get the book, uh, be encouraged. And as we get ready to close, uh, just Coach K, if you can share where people can go to find more about you, where they can go to get your products, your book, the app, and then anything else you want to share as we close. But we really want people to be able to connect with you. I appreciate that. Anybody can go to BermanKerns.com. You can download my audio book. There's light in the tunnel. That will be, it's on sale right now for $7.92. It's going to go up to 15 bucks. You can also pre-order the print version, um, the paper copy. That comes out next month on 8.6. That's in process right now. My first book is always up, always pick last. It's on free for Kindle. It's actually free on my YouTube channel, Burma Kearns. It's free. I had a 14-year-old read that from Ireland, who's a friend of mine, and then he interviewed me afterwards. So I put that up completely free because I was a kid that sucked at every sport. Um, as far as my final thoughts of this, you can pick your friends, you can't pick your family. So you know what? A lot of times, go to your friends because you're, a real friend will give you an honest opinion. You know, if you need help, go get it. You want to reach out to me? Fine. 508-404-8503. 508-404-8503. I have a phone. I fucking answer it. So I have a phone. People, I go nuts when people like, well, I don't want to call you. Why? I have a phone. I tell people that all the time. You know, I can direct you as best I can. Find a health professional. Go, you know, go get a mental health professional. Figure it out. Yoga, as you know, is a big thing for me. Yoga helps a ton of people. I've been a yogi for 12 years. I'm over at Woods Yoga in Lincoln, in Lincoln uh, Rhode Island. And, you know, this is, I want to quote Anthony DeLuglio, my kettlebell and uh, yoga mentor. Everything's an experience, right? If you're in a pose and you're going through something, you can either choose to suffer in that pose. You can choose to change the pose. Mm. Change your pose. Maybe move. Like I, I had a friend of mine from Rev Gear. He looked at my new place. I said, yeah, it's cheaper than Boston, but it's still a little pricey. He goes, Kev, but look out your window, man. I come home, I come, I'm at peace. I listen to that river every day. Sometimes it's angry. You know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's fluid. And, you know, don't try, to be, don't try to be perfect. There is no perfect. Progress. I'll take a quote from Wayne Dyer. Don't get stuck in the wake of your life. The wake's what's left behind. Or... My, my, my lawyer, Jonathan Mull, says this to me all the time. Do you remember Cannonball One? Oh, yeah. That's old school, brother. <laughs> hey, I'm old school. And when with the Italian driver, he takes the mirror out, gives me goosebumps again, throws it out the window, and his, 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 um, his co-pilot says, why are you doing that? It does not matter anymore. Only the, the only thing that matters is what's in front of me, not what's behind me. Put the past in the past. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow's a mystery. Today's a gift. That's why they call it the present. Mm. That was awesome. I want to thank Coach Kevin Kearns for being our guest today and investing in all of our listeners. My pleasure, John and Drew and, and, and Hack and everybody in Brookfield. You guys honor me. So I'm going to take a page from Mark Delagrati from City Tongue. Cup and cup means thank you very much, sir. <laughs>